Welcome to day two of OpenStack Summit. And now please bring to the stage Mark Collier. Good morning, OpenStack. I appreciate everybody getting in here so early. Uh, I definitely would like to thank Piston for providing the buses directly from the party to the keynote. <laughs> for those of you who've been up all night, I mean, I think that was a, that was a nice gesture. Um, so I think, you know, we continue to see just incredible growth in OpenStack, and clearly some of you need to review uh, some of the old other releases. So I thought it would be fun to kind of go back through and look at our first nine releases and talk about how OpenStack has evolved. And then really turn and think about the next nine releases. You know, I think we're really at the very beginning of a whole industry transformation of every industry. I want to talk a little bit about that. And so if we look at uh, the road to Icehouse, Icehouse was our ninth release, as you may know, just released a few weeks ago. And you know, a lot of user input went into that, a lot of people who started with earlier versions and you know, went through uh, a lot of the, the hard times early on, who came, became super users and really helped us influence it with things like live upgrades and really helped uh, make the future upgrades a lot easier. You know, in just under four years, we had nine releases. And so this is a little animation we put together that actually shows you a lot of the development activity. So starting with Nova, the compute service, and object storage. So those were the first two components that were part of OpenStack in the Austin release. You may even recognize a few of these names. They get a little bit harder to read as, as the OpenStack grows. But you know, folks like Jesse Andrews and Todd Wiley, AKA the Beard, uh, a lot of the early OpenStack uh, pioneers were really working tirelessly to make those early versions of OpenStack. And you know, we quickly added Glance, the image service, which came in the bear release. That was the second release. And uh, at, over time, we have expanded the scope of OpenStack. And there's been a lot of discussion about that. You know, how do we go about making those decisions? Are we adding the right things? Is it getting too big? You know, Neutron, the networking piece, came in next, and Horizon. And what's important to note here is that this is actually the start of the development activity. So the development activity actually starts well before it ever makes it into an integrated release. Particularly with the more recent releases, uh, many of the, the new capabilities, the new projects, you know, they were in development for two years before they actually became part of a release. And this can be a challenge for all of us, trying to follow along, keep score at home, you know, what's in OpenStack, what's not. And, you know, there's all, we're also very lucky to have an amazing number of different components, different OpenStack-related open source projects. A lot of them are here today. We're helping to bring those communities together. They're not part of OpenStack, but they're, they may be part of an OpenStack-powered cloud. And so I thought it would be good to kind of just review, you know, what's in OpenStack, what are the different projects, and we have this kind of fun animation to see you know, how the different projects evolve over time. And so uh, one of the things that we've done, and as I said, the more recent releases, is with the, the leadership of the technical committee, our project technical leads who are all elected by, by all of you out in the community, all the active contributors, you know, we've really started to raise the bar higher and higher for what it means to be in an integrated release. And if you think about you know, what it took to be in the Austin release, pretty much just needed to be able to spell Austin. Um, bear, you know, we didn't even actually require that you know how to pronounce bear. So if you said Bexar or bear, we counted both because you know, it was early days, um, cactus and beyond. But if you think about what we're actually doing today, you know, we've We've added uh, Horizon, the dashboard, Keystone, which is identity service, uh, Heat and Solometer, which are uh, orchestration and metering systems. You know, these are all capabilities that are instrumental to operating an infrastructure as a service. And a lot of people have wondered you know, about the scope of OpenStack. But if you think about it, you know, it's been four years and nine releases. We now have these 10 key components that are part of the integrated release. They're all really things that fit together. You know, an integrated release means things that we're trying to test together, 
that operators have told us, you know, don't just give me a, a, a bucket of parts, test these things together. You know, today uh, with the summit format, a lot of the discussions, we actually had a full day on cross-project testing, working together to make sure that in the real world, these projects work well together. And if you even look at Ice House versus Havana six months ago, we've actually uh, now have over 50 external testing systems to test things like drivers. And we had two in Havana. So uh, I do believe that we've uh, grown very rapidly as a community, but I think that we're putting some good measures in place to make sure that we're not expanding the scope of OpenStack too fast. Um, but it's al there's always room for debate, and that's what we love about the summits. So when we think about this massive growth, you know, this, this shows you the monthly average contributors. We actually have over 2,000 contributors in total. But it, it's no secret, you know, this is the biggest summit we've ever had. We have more users than ever. We have, you know, Wells Fargo, Disney. We're going to hear from AT&T in a little bit, and Sony and others. You know, what I'm always asking myself is why? Why is there more interest in OpenStack than ever? This, is, this summit, we have 4,700 people here. It's 50% bigger than, than the last one six months ago. You know, what, why is that? And, you know, I believe it has a lot to do with this massive transformation going on in the entire economy. There's a revolution going on inside of global corporations. And, you know, every company has, has to move faster. Every company is now competing with a startup. Even the startups have to worry about the new startups coming in behind them. I mean, you think about Uber. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Uber, but they're really disrupting the whole taxi transportation industry. And then you have Lyft, which has come along to, to compete with them and, and, and even others. So, you know, those have been driven by the power to innovate at speed with agile infrastructure. So I believe that the cloud computing and open source, those are the two biggest drivers of this new competitive landscape. And that's because people want speed. Speed is the name of the game. I'm not sure how many of you get this, but um, he was involved with speed. Um, <laughs> so how many of you here wish that your company could move faster? Any, any show of hands? I know you, a lot of you have your VPs nearby, so you might, <laughs> might not want to raise your hands. How about this? Uh, how many of you want your company to move faster than your competitors? Yeah? Seems like a popular idea. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, we all want to move faster than we did last year, the year before that. And, you know, the reality is if your organization is not aligned around moving faster, too bad. You know, if, you're, if your uh, people in your organization don't have the right skills, you're going to have to hire. I mean, how many people here are hiring? Pretty much everybody. Um, so, you know, you're going to have to get training. You know, if your CIO said to you, don't use the cloud, you know, too bad. You're going to use it anyway, right? Because that's the competitive landscape that every single company on the planet is in. I mean, that is the only path to money these days. Wells Fargo, uh, excuse me, the, uh, Chris from Disney yesterday said that in the old uh, paradigm, you had to choose between cost and quality and speed, and really it's all about speed now. Speed can actually get you to those other things. You have to prioritize speed. And I think that um, we're living in a time when there's more creative destruction going on in every industry than ever before. You know, software is eating the world. Startups are springing up. There's a new incubator every day. And this faster pace is, is shown here in a couple of data points that I wanted to, to run through. So uh, back in the 50s, if you were in the S&P 500, you were going to be there for a generation. If you worked there, your whole career you'd be there. Your company would be at the top. If you were at the top, you stayed at the top because you were at the top. Momentum, being the large, big guy on the block, that was enough. If you look just uh, to the 80s, that shrank to only 25 years. So now it's no longer a generation that you stay on top. And if you actually fast forward to today, the companies in the S&P 500 are only in it for 18 years. 
So this speaks to this incredible age of transformation. Everything's happening faster. Software's driving those revolutions. You know, being big is no longer this great asset. It's all about who can move faster. And if you extrapolate that out and look you know, where we're headed, that means that 75% of the S&P 500 will be replaced by 2027. So those are the facts. You know, we can all debate what are the drivers. I definitely believe that cloud computing, agile infrastructure, the cost dropping for experimentation, those are the things that are driving it. And I think open source is absolutely a, a key component of that. And so OpenStack being at the intersection of those two things, I think, makes us all incredibly lucky. I mean, there's, there's an $80 trillion global economy. Every single aspect is going to be impacted by this. We're at the very beginning, the first inning, the first down, whatever sport. I don't know a lot about soccer, but whatever happens at the beginning. Um, so, you know, I, I think that we're all very lucky to be here. You know, 4,500 people, 4,600 people, Seems like a giant conference, the biggest one we've ever had. But when we think about how big of a change is happening and how OpenStack can play a vital role in that, I consider myself extremely lucky to be here with all of you. And I think that we should be thinking about the next nine releases, not just Juno, but thinking about you know, how big uh, this can be of a transformation, how OpenStack can play that role. You know, in, in today's race, we're faster wins. You know, everything else is a rounding error. And so uh, OpenStack is, is helping so many different companies move faster. And, you know, if you're working for a big company right now, you better put your super user cape on, figure out how to reorganize, uh, bring in the right talent, move faster, embrace these agile technologies like OpenStack and many other related technologies. And so the three people that we're going to be hearing from this morning they are all super users. They are all people who are moving much faster and actually thinking beyond just where we are today and thinking about the next nine releases, thinking about transforming their industries and opportunities that are just bigger than I think we, we've actually really contemplated with OpenStack. We think about public, private cloud. Um, you know, the first person that's going to come up and talk to us is Toby Ford. Now, a couple things about Toby. One, he was an early believer in OpenStack at AT&T. So he was one of, like many of you, probably uh, you know, got the, the OpenStack fever, came back, started leading the efforts internally, getting more and more people bought in within his company. You know, they've been running OpenStack for, for several years now. They've actually running it in many different data centers. Um, and that powers a lot of services that we all use every day. But the opportunity that he's going to talk about in his keynote is actually even bigger. It actually dwarfs the opportunity for when we think about you know, online and web, web companies. So I'll just leave you with one data point before we bring up Toby. So you know, when we want to think bigger, thinking about the next nine releases and beyond, you know, let's take a look at this, this chart. So the very small dot that you probably can't see if you're in the back, that's something called Facebook. That's their revenue. Um, Google is not much further down. So at the bottom here, you know, most people like to figure out where's the biggest opportunity. You know, mobile telco's $1.2 trillion industry. And you might not think of OpenStack as having a whole lot to do with, with mobile telcos. You know, the rest of the telco business is the second one. So telcos make a lot of money. We probably all pay them a lot of money. Um, you know, the TV industry is being uh, remade by moving faster by someone else we'll be hearing from later. But let's think about how big of an opportunity uh, OpenStack can play in the entire global economy, starting with the telco world.